All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Super Asphalt Ball Python, and it's kind of an interesting project. As a matter of fact, I had someone leave a comment under one of my videos, and they said, what can I invest in the minimal amount of money to get the maximum return on investment? And I would say that's probably the Super Asphalt. You can actually buy asphalts, just the base gene, really inexpensive. You breed two of them together, 25% of the time you get a Super Asphalt. And as far as Super Asphalt, I've seen a few of them pop up on Morph Market. It's not very common and I would say it's probably one of the best base building blocks to add other genes on top of the project to make some really interesting combos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Morph Market and I want to show you the Super Asphalt and what you can do is kind of the potential of the Super Asphalt adding more genes into the mix. All right, so I'm over here at morphmarket.com and this is what an asphalt looks like. And when you first look at the snake, you probably have a hard time telling the difference between an asphalt and just a normal wild type classic ball python. Looks pretty much just like a normal. As a matter of fact, if someone handed me the snake, I would say, you know, unless you really knew the breeding and where it came from, it'd be really difficult to figure out if this was an asphalt or not. It's a really subtle morph. As a matter of fact, they have this one listed as an asphalt slash yellow belly so essentially what happens is I'd say in a lot of cases in most cases what someone's actually doing is they're taking like a highway or a freeway and they're breeding it back to something else and if they get a normal remember the highways and the freeways are actually allelic so half of the offspring come out yellow belly the other come out as asphalt or gravel and I'd say asphalt and gravel are almost the same thing they're just slightly different lines as a matter of fact I think I like the asphalt just a little bit better than the gravel it seems like it's a little more intense in most cases although I have seen some gravel lines that are really impressive as well so it's, it's kind of interesting if you actually bought something like this the asphalt slash yellow belly this is either an asphalt or a yellow belly and if you actually bred two of these together and they both happen to be yellow bellies essentially what you would get is you would get ivories which is an all-white snake with black eyes kind of interesting or if you actually bought two of these and you bred them together one was an asphalt and one was a yellow belly you would actually get freeways out of the mix so it's kind of a gamble when you're actually buying into these lower end projects unless it's actually listed as an asphalt you can kind of you know kind of take a chance it's kind of a 50 50 chance if you're buying something like this as a matter of fact if you look at the prices on some of these this is a hundred and fifty dollars for this asphalt yellow belly it's either an asphalt or yellow it's, it's kind of interesting Sometimes they'll list both genes and it can kind of trick you. If you're not really into ball pythons, you see both genes and you think they're actually both in there and no, it's not. It's either one or the other. It doesn't definitely does not have both genes in this snake. So this is what a super asphalt looks like. Probably one of the most impressive supers out of all the ball python supers that I've ever seen. This is a really awesome snake. And if you actually take a look at the price on the super asphalt, take a look at this. This sold for 4,500 uh, Canadian dollars. So it's, I'd say it's a little bit different than US, pretty close though. And th these are selling for an insane amount of money for super asphalt. So this one happens to be 66% het pie. So probably what they did is they they bred together two het pies to that that you know the the female and the male were both het pies and then you get a 66 percent chance that this actually carries one copy of the pie gene. They're probably going for the the pied super asphalt is probably what they're going for, and it's it's kind of interesting if you actually look at some of the other genes that we can mix into the super asphalt. Take a look at this. This is is a pastel this is probably one of the best examples that I've ever seen of a pastel and the pastel is like the bread and butter of ball pythons these are super inexpensive this one is het clown if you look at the prices on pastels this one actually sold for sixty dollars you're probably paying more in shipping on a snake than this snake is actually selling for these are really awesome snakes these pastels and you can mix them in with anything it really enhances almost anything when you mix pastel in this is what happens when you mix pastel with the super asphalt. 
take a look at this crazy snake. I'd say this is probably one of the most impressive combos. I've actually seen some lines of the, the super asphalts and the highways and freeways that have a little bit cleaner white background than this. This one's kind of browned out a little bit and I think it really depends on the line of the asphalt and the line of the pastel kind of you know the, the effect you get. I've seen some that look completely different that are like the, the asphalt like the like the freeways with the pastel. If you look at a whole bunch of pastel freeways I'd say every single one is almost completely different. Depends on the line of asphalt and it's kind of interesting there's multiple lines of asphalt and people just kind of group them all together into just the asphalt. They don't really distinguish the lines. Here's another one that's pretty awesome. This is an Enchi, and an Enchi is another base morph that works really well with everything. And essentially what Enchi does is it reduces the pattern. You can see, kind of loses the alien head look of the normals, reduces the pattern. And a lot of times with Enchi, you'll actually bring out a lot of the yellow or the orange color in the snake. This is what happens when you mix Enchi with super asphalt. Take a look at this. This is, this is pretty awesome, but you can actually go one step further than this. So the Enchi cheese super asphalt you can actually add pastel on top of it and this is what a pastel enchi looks like without the super asphalt and if you actually add the super asphalt on top of it take a look at this this is a really awesome snake this is the super enchi the, the sorry the super asphalt with the enchi and the pastel and it's kind of interesting in this case with the enchi it almost cleans up the background and cleans up the pattern and then when you add pastel on top of it, it just really makes the whole snake just really pop. And take a look at the head pattern on this. This is a really crazy looking head stamp like I've never seen anywhere before. That is a pretty awesome snake. Here's another one, the albino, and the albino is kind of interesting because it's also, uh, it's actually a recessive. So you actually, if you take the super asphalt and then mix in albino, essentially what you're trying to hit is you're trying to hit the super and a recessive at the same time. So you actually have four genes. It's a little bit difficult to hit. This is what happens when you mix asphalt, the super asphalt with the albino. Take a look at this. This is kind of really unexpected. The albino super asphalt. And at first it's it's like you almost can't even see the super asphalt. And when I first saw this, I was like, is this right? Are they actually listing the right genetics in the snake? And you know, in a lot of cases, I would say the albino is really visually dominant. You add a lot of stuff into albino and the albino just really dominant. But I thought I thought it was kind of interesting. I was kind of surprised that more of the super asphalt didn't actually break through on the snake. But you can definitely see the pattern is really jumbled up from the super asphalt. Here's another one. This is a spider. The spider's kind of tricky because you definitely don't want to breed two spiders together because the super spider is lethal. It's one of the lethal combinations. And if you actually hit the super spider, a lot of people say that essentially what happens is the egg starts to develop in the egg and then right before it hatches, it actually dies in the egg and you end up with a white snake that is a super spider. It dies in the shell. Some people have actually cut them open. You definitely don't want to breed spider to spider because it'll reduce the number of offspring you get from the pairing. This is what happens when you mix spider with the super asphalt. Take a look at this crazy snake. That is really awesome. And it's kind of interesting on the sides. You know, it's almost like if someone handed me the snake, I don't think I could actually tell that the spider was in there. There's really no spider web pattern down the, the, the top of the snake. And the sides of the spider usually look kind of like a calico with the white coming up the sides. And this has a really interesting, almost like a granite kind of a interesting pattern on the side. Really awesome, kind of orange coming in on the sides. That is pretty awesome. Here's another one you can actually add to the super asphalt. This takes the spider and it goes to the next level. This is actually the Enchi spider, which is also called the stinger bee. It's kind of the slang for this combo. Probably one of the most awesome uh, combos you can make with a spider. Essentially what it does is it takes the spider web pattern and reduces it even more when you add the Enchi. And a lot of times when you add the Enchi to some combos, you can see more of this yellow or the yellow orange coming out more, really brightens and intensifies the, the combination. This is what happens when you mix 
a stinger bee with the super asphalt. Take a look at this. This is really insane. This is probably, this one takes the cake right here. This is probably the most impressive ball python that I've ever seen over here on Morph Market. As a matter of fact, I saw this one and I was like, I gotta do a video on the super asphalt because this is just, this just kind of blows me away. As a matter of fact, this one is actually, I pulled this up on the European Morph Market and actually you can go over here and you can switch switch from the uh, United States to Europe or South Africa over here and I was kind of looking through the super asphalts just kind of out of curiosity over here this one's actually in Berlin Germany kind of a, a kind of an interesting place to produce one of the most impressive snakes that I've ever seen all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And George Gonzalez asks, is it possible to have a super of a recessive gene like a super ghost or a super pied? And that is a very good question. I would say in ball pythons, generally when we talk about recessives, we talk about visuals having two copies of the gene. And when we have one copy of the gene, normally we say it's het or heterozygous. So we would say it's het ghost for one copy of the gene, or or we would just say it's ghost or a visual ghost for the, the two copies of the gene, the visual expression of the recessive. We don't, don't really talk about supers when we're talking about recessives. And it gets a little bit confusing because, you know, for example, the asphalt, if you have two copies of the gene, it is actually a super asphalt, meaning that it's a codominant morph. If you have two copies and it looks completely different, usually, usually in a codominant, you can actually see one copy of the gene. For example, this is a bamboo around my neck. This is Bobby here. <laughs> this is, he has just has one copy of the codominant dominant bamboo you breed two bamboos together you get a super bamboo which is an all-white snake with blue eyes that's pretty awesome and kind of the the trouble is especially if you're new into ball pythons so now you, to even talk the terminology of genetics you have to know all the hundreds of morphs you have to know which ones are which which ones are recessive which ones are dominant which ones are co-dominant to even properly talk about the genetics it gets a little bit complicated when you're first starting in ball pythons and usually I'd say in most cases most people will start with just a few morphs kind of get a handle on of it you, you kind of know the recessive genes like the clowns and the pies and then you know the supers the co-dominants like the bamboo and the pastel and the asphalt so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video